Hi everyone, uh, good morning to everyone watching. So this video is going, is going to be about Docker. It's about the problem that I faced at my, at my at my work and my for my projects. And it turns out that this is a common problem where which many developers face early on when they are into using Docker. So yeah, let's get, just get right into the problem, right? A short uh, blurb about, about Docker. Docker is basically think of it as a package to run your entire application. So it can uh, you know if you have a dependencies, you have you can it can handle even runtime system tools, everything. You basically package your entire uh, project into a container and docker runs it for you so instead of having python or any dependencies installed in in your own system uh you basically outsource it to docker which uh runs your project so you can just share the project uh the docker file along with all your uh folders to anyone and they can just uh, run your project using docker so that's it about docker so the problem that we are talking about is many times uh just think of it think of a project right a project has so many folders inside it, right like look at any standard github repo or in any project structure you can have the load model file you can have the config file you can have the json file you can have uh the load ui file you can have like so many files like the src file it goes on and on and there might be cases where you need to make some changes to these individual files when you are in the stages of development right and you're using docker to run your project so the standard method that is that we generally end up using is every time we make a change uh we basically uh, build the image again and then run the container so if I make a change to change to the config file or to the load model file or any logic in any function of any of these files, I'll, I'll, I'll have to rebuild my image and then uh, run the container again. And this process is kind of a tedious process where you end up rebuilding the image at every stage whenever you make a change. And it's, it's not practically a, 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 a industrial way to approach things, right? So, and for this, we have a solution. So normally in your Docker file, you'll see you generally have the copy dot dot command and then you set the working directory to a folder inside dot docker, right? So Docker is using uh, files and folders inside the root of the container itself. But imagine if you can connect Docker's to the host directory of your system. So uh, here is the host directory, which has all the project folders inside it. And here is Docker. But in the initial case, Docker is using its own directory and it's copying all the folders from the host to Docker and then running the project. But imagine if Docker could have a live connection from uh, the container to your host directory itself, like there's a bridge connecting the two. So in that case, whenever you make any change uh, in, your, in, in your host, because these two are connected now, these changes will automatically reflect in the container in real time. You don't have to rebuild the image. You don't have to uh, run the container again and again. So this is the problem that we are going to be uh, talking about. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you two scenarios where we are using the uh, very, where we are not using, uh, where we, we are not creating this uh, mounting uh, and we are using, we are, we are running things inside the container. Uh, and in the second scenario where we are actually connecting the Docker's root directory to the directory of my uh, host system and uh, Docker is directly connected to my host system. So as, as I'm going to make the change in my config file or whatever file, it's going to be reflecting in my container directly. So yeah, let's just uh, get right into it. Let me just uh, share my screen and yes, we'll just get started. Yeah, so here is a standard uh, uh, app.py Python uh, Flask application uh, because this, this is this is fairly basic. Normally, when you're in in, in a, a project, they'll be, they'll have so many folders. Like like I said, the config file, the SRC file, the setup file, the load model file, the run model file, uh, run Python file, X Y Z. So many files, and you'll, you'll end up making. You'll have to in the early stages of development, you'll have to make so many changes to these files, right? So here, suppose uh, now this is uh, this is a standard uh, Docker file. And as, as you said, right, uh, the the working directory is within the container itself. I've copied all the contents from uh, my uh, host directory to Docker and things are running inside the container, right? So let me just uh, build, uh, build, build, build this uh, image and run the container itself. So I had already run this and let me just find the command. Yes. So uh, I'm, I'm right now, I just, uh, I'm, I'm building the image. Uh, it's a standard uh, Python uh, Flask application that, that prints hello TT in a, in a local host. So you see, I've, I've built the image, right? And now I'm going to be uh, running this uh, uh, container, which is running on port uh, 3000. So yes. So right now you see, I can show you that 
the output is here, right? You see it's, print in, it's printing hello TT, right? This is now I've built a standard image and I ran the container. Suppose now I, I want to, I want to make a, a change here. Uh, suppose instead of hello TT, I'm going to pick like hello SSS, whatever it is. And then I save it and let me just get out of this container. So right now I've made a change. So the standard method that I would be, uh, the not the non-practical method is you again, build the image. You see, it, it takes, uh, it takes some time and then you again run the container, right? And then let me just refresh this. You see now it's hello SS, right? So as, as you saw, like I had to rebuild the container. I had to again, uh, build my image and then run the container again. And this is, this is like, uh, I'm, I'm talking about a very small change for the purpose of this video. This, this change is very small. Normally when you're working in a large scale project, there might be so many changes and, uh, there might be so many libraries, so many different folders. So building the image actually takes a, takes a lot of time and uh, you'll end up wasting a lot of time. Right? So here for this to, to tackle this problem where we are, where we have to end up, where we end up uh, building the image and we cannot observe our changes in real time. Uh, we, we have a solution for that. And that this is what I'm going to uh, show you. So uh, now we are going to be using a second uh, case where we'll be using something called uh, Docker volumes, right? So volumes basically allow you, allow you to connect the container with the host uh, directory itself. So imagine like this is your host directory and this is your container and you've used like a bridge to connect these two. So any, any, any moment you make changes in your host system, it, it will be directly reflected into the container itself in real time. You don't have to uh, rebuild the image again, again, and again. So for that, you need something called a Docker compose file. So Docker compose file is basically like a, uh, it's used to run multi-stage containers, but here we are going to be using it to define that volume. So here I've defined the volume where I have connected, where I have told Docker's using this, uh, this colon and slash to uh, where it indicates now Docker has a live connection to my uh, host uh, directory. So it's, it's using, it's not using folders which are inside, uh, inside its own. It's not using this, but it is actually using what is there inside my host system directory. It's using this app dot file and not the app dot PV, which is created uh, inside Docker's the Docker composer YML file indicates Docker to use uh, the, the, the directory of my host system in real time. So again, this is the same app. I'm running it on port five, uh, zero, zero one. And let me just uh, run this uh, image first. So I will build my application. I will build the image now. And I build the image. And now I'm going to be using this uh, Docker compose command. And Docker compose up will basically run this uh, 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 Docker image using uh, the volume, which has been mounted to my uh, uh, actual host directory. So you see now, let me uh, make open this class uh, tab. It should print what is the uh, default hello SS23 that, that was there in the uh, in, in my file. Now, if I'm, if I'm actually making a change, right? So now you, now, now, now you can see what, uh, what problem that we have solved here. So if I make a change, if I change this to a, and then I save it, you see it happened automatically. I don't have to, now, if I go, I, I didn't have to rebuild. I don't have to rebuild the image. I'll just refresh the page and you can see here it shows hello AAA. I'll make, I'll, 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 I'll do something else again. Hello, five, five, and then I'll save it. And then again, I'll go refresh my container it run again and it, it is. So, so you see the, the problem that we have solved. So instead of having to make the changes again and again, rebuilding the image, I'm actually making changes in real time. And that is reflecting in my container in real time. So it ends up saving a, a, a lot, lot of time. And this is what uh, I, I wanted to show. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is, and this, this is a common problem, which developers face early on. And there are two uh, limitations of this. So you can't be uh, using this in, uh, in your, 
production environment. This is primarily to be used in a development setting because uh, you're essentially mounting your a Docker container with the host directory of your system. You should not be doing this in your production environment because of obvious uh, security reasons. But for development uh, environment, it works per perfectly fine. It streamlines your process and makes uh, the process quite uh, uh, time saving and uh, you get feedback on your uh, uh, development changes in real time. And also uh, there's one more limitations of this. So imagine uh, the, uh, like here, the changes that whatever we are making is within my source code, right? So imagine where you have to make a change, something where which involves installing dependencies or updating any library. That change is not basically that you're doing within your source code, within your own computer. That is something you're doing externally, right? So for that case, you have to rebuild your image uh, and then run the container again. You have no option uh, because uh, it, it's not happening within the container's file system, right? Within your host's file system. Whenever you do a pip install something, it's installing something from somewhere. Whenever uh, a Docker also uh, gets those Python runtime or Docker also updates a library, it's happening. It's happening in Docker Hub. It's an external connection. It's not happening within your own file system. So whenever you need to be up, uh, update dependencies or install libraries, that case you have no option but to rebuild the image. But Whenever, whenever you have to make a source code changes like uh, changing the name here or in your uh, actual project directory where you have to where you have the load model dot file uh, load model file you have to update a function or you know you have to add some variable or you have to add some modify some logic in your constant dot py file in your directory that case uh, using docker volumes and compose uh, works really well so uh, yeah this is the problem that i wanted to uh, share with you all and i hope it made uh, sense uh, uh, let me let me know if you have any uh, questions about this and i'll see you in the next one thanks you thank you bye bye